Hello, and welcome to Bot Wars, the show where we pit two teams of 12 bots against each other and see what happens, all in the name of science. After all, how else are we to observe the behaviour of these challenged yet fascinating creatures? With these experiments, we hope to truly understand the thought patterns and motivations of a bot, as well as gain important data on the bot's tactical strategies. However, such experiments aren't without consequence. In this case, exposure to such a high dosage of artificial intelligence can lead to excessive anger, inability to form coherent sentences, and loss of brain cells. You have been warned. But anyway, let's get on with the show. Our first map is CP Process. This alpine lab is located in a beautiful mountainous region and is usually calm and peaceful. That was until we populated it with 24 engineers. As we already know, engineers are the smartest variety of bots, so it'll be very interesting to see what ingenious methods they come up with to eliminate the enemy and capture the area. They've been in the arena for some time now, so let's take a look at what they've been doing. But what? Wait, this can't be right. They've all just built sentries around the point. They're not even attacking each other. This was the amazing plan these supposed prodigies came up with? To just sit behind their guns swinging their wrenches and hoping that the point will cap itself? If these are the cleverest bots that exist, I'm scared to think of what the other classes will be like. They're not even doing it right. This engineer, for example, hasn't even upgraded his sentry to level 3. He's trying at least, I'll give him credit for that. But he's been swinging his wrench for what must have been several minutes since we arrived, and he hasn't hit the gun once. The worst part is he hasn't even noticed. You'd think sooner or later he'd realise and move to a better position. But no, he just keeps on missing and missing. Then we've got this bot, who's built a sentry facing a wall. He literally had one job, and that was to build a sentry facing the point. But no, he couldn't even get that right. Instead, he built a turret facing the exact opposite direction. Knowing engineer bots as we do, maybe this could be perceived as some new form of peaceful protest. On the other hand, it's probably more likely that this engineer is just particularly challenged. Observing a being capable of displaying this level of stupidity is an incredible sensation that, up until now, not many people can say they have experienced. But this is no longer the case, as thanks to these new mediums of communication, we can educate the masses and let them know that these creatures are out there and they need help. However, that is not our job. Moving on, we see a herd of wild teleporters. The ones we see here are only young, but one day, they will mature into fully grown teleporters. For a teleporter to reach adulthood, they must first receive a lot of care and attention from their engineer daddies. Unfortunately, the engineer daddies for these teleporters are nowhere in sight. Because of this, they have fallen into a state of neglect. If the engineer daddies don't change their way soon, these teleporters will have no hope of ever growing up. If we take a look at the blue team's teleporters, we can see a perfect example of how a teleporter should be treated. These teleporters have all been given a lot of love and attention and are all, in the words of a 12 year old on a Minecraft forum, very mature. They all emit a healthy glow which indicates their fathers have cared for them well. Maybe the bots aren't as stupid as they seem. Going back to the red team's teleporters, we can see their engineers are slowly learning how to be good parents. One by one, they come to full maturity and begin giving off a healthy red shine. However, there is one teleporter that doesn't receive the love it deserves. Instead, it is forced to watch as all the other teleporters grow up and become useful members of society and it falls deeper and deeper into a state of neglect and disrepair. Why don't you love me, father? It says. What did I do to deserve this existence? Returning to the midpoint, the engineers are still participating in the world's most pointless stalemate. Most are just crouching behind their sentries, swinging their wrenches every now and again. However, this engineer has frozen and is standing completely still. Of course, we should have seen this coming. With so many engineers, it was highly likely that at least one of them was going to ascend to the highest state of awareness unknown to most bots. Yes, like many other engineers before him, this bot has become aware of the sin that is war. Following this revelation, in typical engineer fashion, he has entered a state of stunned shock, unable to move. From now on, 
This engineer will spread the word of peace and love throughout the Badlands, and his message is already having an effect as two more engineers join him in his incapacitated trance. As all three of them stare out across the battlefield, the original bot begins to think that he may be able to make a difference. Unfortunately for him though, this is no documentary themed drama. This is Bot Wars, and for the sake of entertainment, he must be terminated. By this time, the round is nearing its end, and since the bots have yet to capture the central control point, it will end in a stalemate. And as it does so, all the engineers raise their hands in defeat. Who they are surrendering to is unknown. But as you watch them kneeling on the ground trembling in fear, you can't help but feel a sense of pity for these poor souls. One day, they may find their purpose in life, or work out how to properly care for their buildings, or even just learn how the control point's game mode works. But until then, they will remain what they are. Artificial Intelligence Coming up on Bot Wars, the engineers make a comeback. Will they prove to be more effective in a game mode more suited to their abilities? And what class will we find on PLR Hightower? Find out very soon. But first, a message from our sponsor. Every day, thousands of bots are abandoned by their owners. Left out in the cold with nowhere to go, these poor souls are often exposed to extreme conditions that no living being should ever have to face. That's why we at the Too Many Hats Gibbers distribution charity work day and night to make sure these misunderstood outcasts of society always have access to cheap and affordable clothing. But we need your help. The price of keys is rising and a backpack full of weapons isn't worth what it used to be. What could once buy 20 hats can now purchase only one. That's where you come in. By donating just one hat a month, you can help to keep thousands of homeless bots warm throughout the year. Something you think of as a low-tier cosmetic could help save a life. Donate a hat today and make a bot happy. Welcome back to Bot Wars. As we mentioned earlier, our second location for today is Hightower. But what class inhabits this mostly abandoned area? It is of course, the Common Sniper. We see them here running… oh right, of course. After some readjustments, we're back. And now the snipers are successfully making it over the fences. As I'm sure you all know, the bot's goal is to push their team's payload to the bomb site on the opposite side of the map. And the team that completes this task first, wins. Since this is the only win condition, you'd think the snipers would make pushing the carts their number one priority. Wrong. The snipers are just running around aimlessly on their respective team's side of the map, and any actual pushing of the payload is purely accidental. Every so often, a sniper strays onto the other team's side of the map, but they are dealt with fairly swiftly. If we zoom out, we can see both teams at once. As you can see, the blue team is currently, quotation marks, winning, as they have pushed their bomb the furthest. However, in the long run, it would be more accurate to say that both teams have lost. For some reason, they feel a strong connection with these corners, and they stick very closely to them, as if they'll offer some kind of guidance or protection. In reality, they are probably more confused than we are. You'd think it would be a simple task, push bomb, shoot heads, but alas, they are having trouble even navigating the map. However, there are a few bots that break away from the herd. This sniper, for instance, manages to make his way behind the enemy team. He looks down upon them and is almost overwhelmed. For him, this must be the equivalent of heaven. 12 enemy snipers and not a single one has noticed him. He raises his rifle and lines up a shot. There's no rush, he cannot miss this. Surprisingly, he doesn't. At this point, I'd pretty much lost all faith in the bots, but the sniper's bullet meets its target's head dead center, killing him instantly. The sniper's moment of glory is short-lived though, as one of the blue team has noticed his presence. The blue sniper takes on the challenge and engages the red bot in a duel. Will his honor be taken away from him, or will the red bot win, retaining the title of number one sniper? Of course, he loses. His shot misses, but the blue sniper's doesn't, and our champion is defeated. This goes on for several more hours. At least, that's how long we bother to watch for, They'd probably still be fighting if we let them, but we thought we'd move them to another location where we felt they'd be a lot more comfortable. 
And so, we arrive at two faults. Since they are all snipers, you'd expect the bots would be in their element here, and as we watch them leave their spawn, they appear to give off an essence of excitement. In fact, some are so excited, they cannot contain it, and have to take a moment to run back and forth on the spot. To us, this seems like an odd way to show emotion, but for the bots, there's nothing out of the ordinary here. Since they are not human, they don't experience the same emotions we do. Their limit is recognizing something they like, which in turn causes them to enter a state of hyperactivity. It won't last long. Sure enough, the bots soon tire and make their way towards the enemy base. Out on the battlefield, the red team is advancing confidently on the blue team's side of the map. It appears the blue team has decided to adopt an unusually passive strategy, and because of this, the red team is able to get very close to the blue base without many casualties. Their goal of course being to capture the enemy's intelligence briefcase, which is hidden in a secret underground bunker below the building. The red team appears to have the upper hand, but after they enter the enemy base, three blue snipers sneak out unnoticed. Could this all be part of the blue team's elaborate plan to lure the red team into their base and then steal their intelligence without them even realizing? It could very well be, but unfortunately for the blue team, they haven't chosen the smartest of bots to carry out the mission, for one of the snipers walks over the bridge and then immediately steps backwards into the water below. Whether this was intentional or not, we cannot know for sure, but the way he presses against the wall for a bit gives the impression the bot hasn't even realized it's happened. Nevertheless, he disguises his blunder very well and quickly recalculates his route, which tells him to infiltrate the base via the sewer system. It appears to go well for him, as he doesn't encounter a single red team member. At first, one could assume they are all still in the blue base. But as our sniper makes his way up the stairs leading to the intel, an enemy sniper walks in, carrying his own team's briefcase. Evidently, the rest of the blue snipers didn't do a very good job at defending. It's probably worth noting that if you plan to let the entire enemy team into your base, you best make sure you have a plan to deal with them. Anyway, the red sniper runs at the intruder, with his SMG spraying bullets everywhere. Needless to say, the blue sniper is killed, and with this obstacle out the way, the intelligence carrier's way is clear. Unfortunately, at that moment, another blue sniper appears from around a corner, his gun raised. The red sniper has time to fire a few shots, but it is too late to do any real harm. The blue sniper fires, and once again surprisingly, considering he is a bot, doesn't miss. After the deed is done, the blue team's intelligence carrier steps out into the open air. Having protected their briefcase, they now make their way back to their own base. As they begin their journey, a red team member sees them, but for some reason, he decides to ignore this breach of security and runs back into the respawn room. He thinks if he doesn't acknowledge the situation, it won't have happened. With this one obstacle out the way, the blue snipers enjoy a leisurely walk back to their base. The rest of the blue team seems to have decided now is the time to attack, and so the red snipers aren't able to pursue. Thanks to this, the briefcase carrier easily makes it to the bunker, and the documents are secured. But the blue team hasn't won yet, for instead of retrieving their team's briefcase and bringing it back with them, the blue snipers stupidly left it lying inside the red team's base. Sure enough, it's not long until a red sniper finds it sitting there and captures it. The rest of the round follows a similar fashion. The bots just lack the intelligence to defend their own, well, intelligence. Eventually, the red team wins, and the blue team appears to have some trouble navigating their way down a hole. Just more evidence to confirm that bots are some of the dumbest creatures alive. So let's not waste time here, and instead, let's move on to our next match. PL Upward A very strange location to say the least. It seems to consist of a large mesa with a precariously built mining facility on top. One questions why you'd build anything on this hazardous marvel of nature, yet the bots did so anyway, and now they must fight to the death within an arena of their own making. But which class will be battling, you may be asking? Well, which class is the best at pushing payloads? We can already rule out snipers, so that must mean... That's right, scouts. We can see them here running to defend, but they've got plenty of time. The blue team won't be released for another minute at least. We can see them here, all lined up. This is the most organized the bots will ever be, but soon they will abandon this sense of order for objective-fueled chaos. Outside the blue spawn, the red team is ready and waiting. 
Each scout has found a position and they're counting down the seconds till the round starts. Sure enough, the gate opens and the entire blue team is completely decimated. But all is not lost, for once they respawn, the blue scouts manage to push out of their base and of course, every one of them immediately doggy piles on top of the cart. To be honest, we should have seen this coming. Bots of different varieties are bad enough on payload, but when you make it so the entire team consists of nothing but cart pushers, it begins to get a tiny bit stupid. Nevertheless, it's looking to be working quite well for them, as the blue team has soon reached the first point, and they don't stop there despite the resistance the enemy team is putting up. All but three scouts may be dead, but they don't abandon the cart for one second and make their way into the mine. By the time they make it to the other exit, they have been met by reinforcements and they are ready to take on the second point, which they actually cap without any problems. The red team really needs to step up their game. Half of them are just standing around and the rest are hopelessly out of position. The bomb is approaching the third point and there are still red bots in the mine. Honestly, how do they expect to defend a point if they're a mile behind it? In any case, the payload makes its way across the bridge connecting the second section of the map to the third, and the red bots have still yet to put up any form of resistance. We've already established that a large portion of the team is lost, but if we take a look beneath the crossover, we will discover another reason the red bots are failing to put up a proper defense. That's right, you'd think one day they'd learn, but no, the bots still don't understand Newton's third law, and that you cannot in fact walk through walls. What makes it even worse is that it only ever happens when there's a very obvious exit in the immediate vicinity. Maybe there's something about these mysterious architectural features that interferes with the bot's navigational programming. I imagine the bot's thought patterns go something like, if doorway is located, ram face into nearest wall. Back at the cart, the blue team is about to capture the third point, and they soon do so. The blue bots are still firmly glued to the payload, and up until now, it's always had at least one scout by its side. But that's all about to change. Shortly after the point is capped, the blue team decides to cut its losses and abandon the bomb, and thus their streak is broken. All is not lost however, for more blue team members soon arrive, and the payload is once again on its way. And as it trundles closer to the red team's base, the red bots continue to demonstrate why they are losing. One of their scouts finds himself on a catwalk and attempts to climb this cliff by pushing into it. When the plan doesn't succeed, he just stands there, confused. Walking forward at something has never failed him before, and so he stands there, contemplating his existence. But suddenly, he has a brainwave, or as close to a brainwave a bot can have. For as we know, bots do not possess brains of their own. Anyway, his plan of using the stairs has proved to be a great success. However, this scout's use of the stairs hasn't been as great of an achievement, for they have brought him further away from the point. How could this be? The scout thinks. They worked for that other bot. Despite this momentary lapse of confidence, he eventually decides to trust his instincts and continues in the wrong direction. If we return to the payload, the blue team is very close to winning the match. However, I'm getting a strange feeling we're missing something, and it has something to do with this door. What could possibly be interesting about a door, you may ask? Well, if we take a look behind it, we'll find a singular red scout stuck between the two shutters. This has probably got to be simultaneously the saddest and most pathetic thing I've ever seen on Bot Wars. The scout's not even moving, he's not struggling, he's not even running into the wall as bots are so prone to do in situations like these. Instead, he seems to have just given up. He's accepted there's no escape from this prison, and the worst thing about this is that if we take a look on the other side of the second door, we can see a singular leg poking through the shutter. How did this even happen? Well, if we go back a couple of minutes, we can see that the bots were using this exit when the blue team captured the third point, and this bot was in the wrong place at the wrong time and got caught. What a moron. The blue team is about to end the match, and as they do so, all but one of them is killed in the ensuing blast. Sad, but even that doesn't come close to what we have just witnessed, and as the residual fire of the explosion burns, the trapped bot is still standing there his thumb in his mouth and one leg stuck in the door. And as the sounds of the battle fade and the bots move to a new location, this one scout is left behind, alone, forgotten. It's time for our last location.
which, as you can probably tell, is Dust Bowl. And as promised, the engineers are back, and it appears they're already on the move. Yes, they all seem to possess a common goal, and as they carry their toolboxes through the abandoned mineshafts, they emit a feeling of community. Undoubtedly, these toolboxes contain teleporter entrances. Let's hope these engineers are better fathers than the ones we met previously. As the engineers reach the end of the shaft, it appears their idea of community has grown into something more intimate. It's clear these engineers aren't shy when it comes to situations like these, and they seem to enjoy being inside each other much more than necessary. Maybe we should give them a moment of privacy. Outside, the red team is setting up at the first control point. Being engineers, defense is one of their strongest points, and thus it may seem they have an unfair advantage. However, bots are very unpredictable creatures. Yes, we've already seen how engineers perform when attacking, and the odds may be stacked slightly against the attacking team's favour, but the bots may yet surprise us. Moving back to the blue team, the engineers are still at it. It really is touching to see a group of bots get on so well, but there's one bot who refuses to engage in this activity. Looking back, we can see one engineer breaks away from the main group, and goes back the way he came. He comes to a stop just before a second exit, and waits for the round to begin. As the seconds tick down, he prepares his teleporter entrance. But when the gates finally open, he doesn't leave. Instead, he continues to run back and forth as if the doors were still closed. Other engineers come and begin placing buildings, but our engineer continues to oscillate to and fro like a pendulum. He keeps on stepping out of the base and then back in again as if he's having second thoughts about leaving. Let's leave this indecisive engineer for now because the red team is ready and waiting. They've set up a complex array of sentries surrounding the control point, and it's clear just by looking at it, the blue team is going to have a hard time taking down this elaborate nest. The attacking engineers seem to have realised this too, for when the gates opened, most took one look at the red defences before instantly giving up and backtracking, choosing instead to build teleporters. In the end though, they know they have to capture this point, and they attempt to do it in the only way they know how. Suiciding blindly into the red team with the hope that maybe the sentries won't destroy them instantly. Unfortunately, these were always high hopes, and the ensuing bloodbath is honestly quite sad to watch. But yet, the engineers keep coming. They say the definition of insanity is repeating the same action and expecting different results. But I'm not sure how much we can apply this to bots. After all, we've already established bots lack regular brain functions, so we have to cut them some slack. Anyway, with their one hope of winning dashed, they revert to what engineer bots do best. Building random sentries. I'm not entirely sure what their plan was here. Maybe they thought the red engineers would get cocky and leave the safety of their nest, only to get mown down like… well, like the blue team. But while most of the attacking engineers aggressively carry their toolboxes towards the point, there are some who can't even do this properly. This bot, for instance, seems to be having trouble locating a space for his building. There's plenty of room, but the particular spot he wanted seems to have already been taken. The engineer desperately looks for a way round this problem, but eventually he gives up and runs away, presumably toward the point and to his doom. I think it's safe to say this new plan of the attacking team didn't really work out, and soon the round timer has counted down to zero, signalling the blue bot's defeat. The red engineers run out of their nest, shooting in all directions. They have won. And that is all we have time for today on Bot Wars. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'd love to hear your thoughts, so please send us your feedback so we can improve the show. Be sure to tune in next time for more Bot on Bot action. That's all for now. Goodbye. This meme will never die because. Hello there. Thank you for watching this video, I put a lot of work into it, so if you liked it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content in the future. Also, I'd like to give a huge thanks to Nuckshock for animating part of this video. I'd highly recommend subscribing to him by clicking the link on the screen. That's all for now, goodbye.